let's look at the front page of the star. Why? Do you think, because uh, it's even on the front page, you know, so Donya, we, you can't say it mm. has been ignored. Yeah. Mm. Uh, the question of Unga, where is it? Yeah, it's here, the star. Yeah, yeah, it's on the front page. It's also on the front page of the star. Do you agree with Donya that maybe this should have been the headline? Food shortage, Unga prices likely to rise next week, say Millers? Um, but also, please note that the image at the front. Let me just also be fair. Let's be yeah, fair. Yeah. Let's be fair, Donya. Let's yeah. also be fair to the star. Yeah. What is on the second half? If you can read it for us, second half of the front page of the star. I, I love the photos of the demonstrations, but, but you, when you uh -huh. take your no, your, read it for us. Uh, high cost of living pushes Madare residents to the streets. Yeah. But so what is the headline? Of living? What is the headline? Exactly. The key important thing uh -huh. in a newspaper. Yeah. What is the title of the story? Yeah. Uh, the, the, the why DP Gashawa is in the eye of a storm. Yeah. The headline speaks everything for the newspaper, and the, this newspaper has set an agenda. What is the agenda that they've set? Gashawa, move mm. to this other. Sometimes we can avoid this. We know uh, what he has been saying, of course, right from number one. I told you that he should not have, have referred Kenya as a company. We are a sovereign state. It's not a company. That was wrong uh, coming, from, coming from you. But what's important for Kenyans? This story of Unga prices likely to raise. All right. This is... Uh, well, uh, Dr. Wamai, yes. uh, is it something that perhaps should have been glossed over? No. So I agree with Donya in terms of um, Kenyans have more biting problems, which should be we should be given more priority, of course, like the Unga prizes and all that. And yes, and the role of the media in uh, setting the agenda. So on one hand, I think the media also has power because clearly the party Kenya Kwanza has failed to discipline Gashagua and also his, his boss. They are not, you know, because ideally these issues, we should not be having a Gashagua run in Kenya in the 21st century. I mean, as a deputy president, somebody who speaks like, you know, a village headman, even, I mean, even, I think even a village headman is more measured and, and, but it's not you know, to refer the deputy not, as a village. Wrong. It's okay. I, uh, can I, on, uh, can I, either, okay? it's okay. It's not good. No, no, no. Yeah. We, we don't deal uh, also as a village. It, no, no. This is what it is. So we cannot maybe we, she's like Gashagwa, she's a straight talker ex and, uh, and yes. she also yeah. exactly yeah. so that point oh. we cannot for you people you this this for us as, as a taxpayer we employ all of you so we have to we have to we have to call out people who are doing the wrong thing mm -hmm. and this so on one hand we should be the media probably should be focusing on you know unga and all that on the other hand we have Gashagwa who is employed by the Kenyan taxpayer, dividing Kenyans. And yet, remember 2007? I don't know how many, I mean, whether he, this Gashagua remembers. 2007, Kenya was at the brink of a precipice, you know, of, of war, full drawn war. And it's largely because of political instigation. It's, I mean, Kenyans, as you've seen, people can live together. But politicians, every five years, will come divide you. And this kind of politics that Gashagua is supporting or talks or, or is, is, is about is what brought that division. And Kenyans have moved on. So on one hand, this, the, uh, the, the agenda of Gashagua needs to be put in the headlines so that Kenyans know what we have. Ideally, this should have been dealt with by his boss or his party through a disciplinary committee. But as we said, because our, our, poli our politics now is about big money, is who contributed how much to the, to the party. And depending on how much you brought, you become an untouchable. And that could be the case with Gashagua. Right. But Kenyans, or the, the Kikuyus he's saying he's supporting, half of them are not in his boat. Yeah. Okay, so Jerry uh, is giving me a this. Like, <laughs> when Doria was speaking, she was like, Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah. I'll come to you next with the question of something your, your party leader raised okay. uh, during the retreat in mm -hmm. Naivasha, mm -hmm. and that is that uh, Kenya Kwanza is threatening uh, multi party democracy. Uh, but uh, uh, Njeri, if you didn't say it, would we be talking about it? I'm just really frustrated. To begin with. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, I think I believe the elite, it is the elite that have a major, major issue. 
that are really, really just, you know, they're riled up by Rigadi Kashab, where they're offended by him, you know, because he's straight speaking, like I've said. And I mean, even in the US, as, as, and, and it is very offensive for um, uh, Prof here to call Rigadi Kashagwa, the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, um, to refer to him as a headman or a head, you know, person who's heading a village. Because at the end of the day, what I have said is we have been conditioned to politics of public relations. All of you want me to package it in a nice way. I'll tell you, instead of me telling you in the corporate world that I am fire, uh, firing you, I'll tell you, um, you know, we have, we, we really appreciate your services. We regret that we have to make this difficult decision of letting you go. But I mean, really, I'm just telling you, you have been a crappy, <laughs> you have been a crappy employee and I'm letting you go, you know, and that is what Rigadi Gashagwa does. He just says it straight from the heart. And I understand that for the elite, is it really unsettling for them? And I want to tell them that we have a deputy president that the deputy president is regarding Gashagwa. There is nothing they can do about it. And he is a man of his words and he will support the president to deliver on his agenda to the Kenyan people. And you have said about um, the the threat by my good <laughs> friend <laughs> side of the, of oh, the package. No, okay, we'll, on, we'll come back to that. Tax. We'll come back to that. On tax? On tax. Uh -huh. Yes, you mentioned um, oh, yes. they, they're calling for tax boycott. I really want to wonder, Olive, we say to lipe ushuru to jitegeme do they really want the government will they expect the government to deliver to their people they represent if they do not um encourage them to pay tax because then where will the money come from where will the money for infrastructure for ngcdf you know for all those things that the government does come from to deliver to their people so i mean if, when they call for that then they are calling for failure for their people and i believe we have this upshot with politicians where we really just want to throw anything that will run with the public instead of really thinking about real solutions they have the opposition they're capable of ensuring that they put the government in check let them do their work without rallying up their people or just really 